All right, everybody. Good morning. I hope you're doing great. Welcome to the summer. Pink for summer, right? <laughs> At least it is around here. <laughs> Welcome to the new season. I hope you're doing great. Let's see where we go. This is collective reading. Just take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Sometimes multiple messages can come out during these readings. FYI. All right, let's see where we go. Hi, Maisie. I got the poopers today, little doggy poopers. Embracing enthusiasm. Uncovering treasure beneath the surface lies a great bounty. And discovering truth. You stand in the light of truth. I just, I mean, there's a lot of discovering and uncovering here. Okay, so... um it seems to me that what see, what's coming through right now is there's going to be some new information, okay? New information coming through and new ways of thinking about things, new ways of doing things, like getting yourself excited again if you're kind of bored with what you're doing or something like that. There is definitely that, um, the feeling of excitement, the feeling of Embracing enthusiasm, uncovering treasure and discovering truth. So it's it's almost like some of you are released from a pact or released from a situation where, that was untruthful. Like it was like something you guys, you know, there, there can be a lot of unspoken contracts in relationships, especially with um, soulmates. And soulmates can be anybody, doesn't have to be a life partner, can be somebody who's a best friend or can be somebody who is a parent or, or family member, whatever, could be a lover, can be a husband or wife too. But there's something about this connection that was there was a lot of unspoken contracts. Sometimes the longer the relationship goes on, especially ones that are, are incompatible. You know, you can love somebody and still be incompatible with them, okay? So sometimes relationships, they it's like, well, if I love this person, I should be able to live with them. I should be able to, um, everything should be normal. Everything should be fine. Like if I love them, they love me. Like, why wouldn't that work? But you might love something in them. You might love something about them and not be, and love them and maybe not be compatible. All right. So let's see where we go with the reading today. That might just be a standalone message. Queen of Cups, oh boy, Ace of Swords, Nine of Cups, Temperance, Nine of Swords. Look at this, Ace of Pentacles, Ace of Wands. Wow. Okay, life partner. I have been seeing, <laughs> dudes, all right, I have been seeing this story. Don't worry, this is vitamins, nothing weird. Um, on my arm, see, just vitamins. Uh. Queen of Cups, Ace of Swords, Nine of Cups, the Temperance card, Nine of Swords. So two nines, right? So we're at, and then the three aces coming out here. The Ace of Cups is not here. So I almost feel like you might, it's either you or the other person has like really fallen in love with you. I feel like it's somebody fallen in love with you. If you've fallen in love with somebody and you haven't told them, that's what this Nine of Swords is. If you, if you guys are kind of on the brink of having a relationship and you're like, yeah, this, this is the right person for me. This feels very dynamic to me. Ace of wands, ace of pentacles, ace of swords, but we're still in this formative time where I don't know if this is the right person for me or not. I don't know if we're compatible or not. Archangel Michael is involved here. So I would bet things are going to be pretty good, but look at this five of swords, hierophant, Five of Cups, somebody is leaving another relationship. Six of Wands, Hermit, there's the spiritual. Look at that spiritual connection there. Four of Pentacles, Seven of Swords, Queen of Pentacles, and the High Priestess, High Priestess Hermit. So some, um, some of you who are super spiritual, you may be dealing with a person who's gone from a very traditional kind of relationship and now you're getting into partnership with them. Okay. Like they're becoming the hermit. They've been dealing. I've been seeing this quite a bit. They've been dealing with a relationship that's been really terrible, 
So let's just go from the point of view, if this is you, right? Swap around the characters as you will. If this is you, this relationship that you've been in has been very toxic, manipulative, lots of unspoken contracts, lots of, this is a long time relationship. Okay. Long time commitment, Taurus energy there. And I just feel with that five of swords, it's not been very good. Five of swords, seven of swords, and you're overcoming this relationship. So if you have been in a long time toxic relationships, which a lot of you have, a lot of you have told me about your relationships and what's been going on, that there has been long time toxicity. And this, you, if you have been in that, I want you to know that there is the right, this is the right person. There's love. There's passion. There's, there's, um, uh, it's real, right? It's tangible. It's truthful. It's oriented around your, um, your alignment with where you're going. It's oriented around what's magical about you. What's magical about this person. I do feel like it's possible that if this is you getting out of a really toxic relationship, you may have, you may need to spend some time on your own. I'm going to clarify that in a second. Um, I do feel like there is a chance that you are going to see this person fairly soon, or you, or you already have reconnected with this person. Um, Queen of Pentacles and the High Priestess. If you are the one getting out of a toxic relationship, the person you're going toward is nothing like that. The person you're going toward is somebody super grounded, somebody who takes good care of themselves, somebody who is possibly has money or who has fame or who has um, stability based on their spiritual connection, right? They're really in alignment with their truth. And I only, I feel like this person, you've attracted this person or they've attracted you because you're coming into alignment with your truth. So those of you who are really toxic, narcissistic partnerships, I've talked about this for a few years. Um, the end is nigh. Okay. The end is here. And I'm going to do a couple things here. Let me ask about timing. I feel like you already know this new person. If you are dealing with someone who's in a toxic relationship, they already know you. They already are coming toward you. Okay. In time for Aquarius season, I keep, okay. I keep getting this, that this is starting right now in the solstice. It's starting right now. But I don't feel like this is coming together until maybe. I don't feel like it's coming together until Aquarius time. So this person, I feel like, gets out of this toxicity. If this is you, you really are um, having some issues with letting go of whatever the toxicity is. Meaning, if this person is gaslighting you, I feel like you don't know what the truth is. But I feel like this new person, the person you're going toward does know what the truth is. I just feel like you're you're in a space where you don't know what what's real and what's not. And that is something that's really hard to be in. So it can be that you might have gone down a road of leaving this relationship and coming back a couple times. There can be that. I feel like you finally connect with somebody who's really powerful and really powerful spiritually. And this helps you. And I, I do think that this is about you kind of giving yourself some time. It can even like, it won't, this won't come around until like Aquarius season or into the beginning of the new year. This won't be like a thing. Okay. So it's fine, but like, just know that this is not going to be a fast situation. Even though we have the aces here, I feel like there is somebody ready for you. There is a spiritual partner ready for you, but I also feel like they don't know how long the road is going to be here. And that might give them some anxiety, this person. Okay. But let's just talk about you here, because I feel like if you have been in the toxic relationship, I do feel like you've tried to, um, get out and then you get pulled back in. This is what's known in the narcissistic circles as hoovering. So someone, you leave a terrible relationship, a toxic, a narcissistic partner, whatever it is, and then someone hoovers you back in, like literally like vacuuming you back up to bring you back in. I feel like that might've happened a couple times. 
Okay. And there is a thing that like, you don't know what love is. Cause look at this five of cups. Look at how he's looking at the three spilled cups. He's not even seeing those two cups. He's not even seeing the two of cups. He's only seeing the three of cups that are knocked over. This person that you might have been with could be somebody who is very um, traditional. Okay. Very traditional energy could even be a Taurus or a Virgo. Um, not that all Taurus and Virgos are traditional, but there's definitely something about what's possible that this person doesn't, um, that you or the person I'm talking to here doesn't know. Um, if you have been in a toxic relationship, you may have something called CPTSD, which is a post-traumatic stress disorder. It's, it's a compounded, it's like a, um, continual experience that has not stopped, right? It's just like you're, you're keep, you keep being abused in this certain way. And I just feel like it makes it really hard to see outside of the bubble that you've been put in by this person. And so I do feel like there's a person who's trying to like throw you a line or trying to throw you, and you might be doing this for somebody else, just twist it around if you need to. But um, I feel like this person I feel like um, I'm going to go back and talk about you because I, I really feel like a lot of you who are watching are in this very, very toxic situation. I feel like some of you go from being the hierophant to being the hermit. Okay. And this is really about traditional structures and this is non-traditional structures. This is more sixth house and this is more 12th house in astrology. This is more about like a routine. It's something that's that's channeled through a man-made structure. Not at all, not even a little bit, okay? And I just feel like that's the change you're undergoing here. It's not really about, ooh, it's a new relationship. It's not really about that. There's a lot of new stuff starting here and it feels like the universe is like waiting for you to see that this is a very toxic situation. Um, the six of wands does feel to me like you're overcoming it, but I almost feel like I'm looking at it like this because sometimes I know some of you have written me in my tarot class about like this spread and how I use this spread. I've, since I've used this spread for 15 years, sometimes what shows up for me is different. And I go, I, since I'm an intuitive tarot person, I go with what shows up in the spread. Okay. So if you're really a rules person, like it's always this, it's always that. I think um, that's a, a phase of learning tarot. And I think um, what I'm saying to you is that sometimes, sometimes people who are doing intuitive tarot, which can be different than that, are looking at the bigger picture, looking at how it all fits together. I am definitely see that what's in here is a transformation, um, big transformation from being an abused person to being a spiritual person, to being a partnership person, someone who then can be in partnership um, spiritually. So this can be, um, you know, also someone who's who left abusive relationships a long time ago. If you're watching this and you're feeling like, well, that was me a long time ago. So what are we doing here now? Why is this showing up now? And you're like, yeah, that was me. Let me clarify a little bit of this reading for you. So five of cups, I just feel like you might not be seeing things. King of cups, ace, there's the ace of cups. I love it. I love it. Page of wands and the fool. So if you're the one in the abusive relationship, this person is getting some kind of sustenance from you. Page of wands, they're getting excited. They're getting, they are feeling, um, empowered. Okay. The King of cups and the Ace of cups, like the cup runneth over. This person is starting to see what love is about. And they, this two of cups here, they're not quite seeing it yet, but they are going to get free. This person is going to get free. So if this is you, there is a person around you who is, uh, kind of inspiring you to see things differently, to get outside the bubble. Cause when you're done with these toxic relationships and you get outside that bubble, it's like remarkable how you're like, oh, I didn't know that that was a thing. Is that really what this person's doing? Like you kind of can't even believe it when you're in it. That's what makes it a toxic relationship. That's what makes it gaslighting. Okay, so four of pentacles. What's about this? 
Eight of Pentacles, Three of Wands, Ten of Cups, and the Knight of Pentacles. I feel like um, if you're the one in the toxic relationship and you're moving into as being more spiritual, right? You're stepping into your spiritual awakening. I feel like there is something about money and your work. I think there's a new, something new to do. There's some kind of new work to do. And it could be, <laughs> that's Maisie. It could be that because of your spiritual awakening, it's opening you up to new gifts and that becomes your, this becomes your work. There's something about it. And I feel like the person that you're going toward is really open to spirituality. There's somebody who does some kind of spiritual work. And this is a very happy, very, very happy connection. Ten of cups. And it's like you're willing to put in the time and effort. Knight of pentacles. You're willing to go slow with this and with this relationship because you see it as the future. Okay. It's definitely the future. So some of you, I'm going to clarify the seven of swords. I feel like you don't. Okay. Uh, hold on. Uh, <laughs> like you're saying something to me. Empress. Well, you are. Empress, wheel of fortune, six of swords, and the judgment card. Um, I feel like this person helps you kind of break out of this bubble. Whether they know they're doing it or not. Um, I feel like they're a big catalyst for you in moving into a new life, moving into a new kind of career, moving into a new kind of job. Some of you may have told the truth to a toxic person and you're excited about moving on, but then you're like, what the F am I doing? Right? Oh my God, am I going to be in trouble? Am I going to lose a lot of money? Am I going to be la 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 la? Is it going to be really bad for me? And I'm here to tell you that I don't think that's true. I think, you know, my experience as having been in these kinds of relationships, oh yeah, three, maybe four of them in this lifetime. These people are cowards. I want you to understand that. These people are cowards and you are not a victim. You are somebody who is strong, who has all these amazing treasures inside, who has all these incredible capabilities, but you don't see it because they've taken that away from you. They've made you feel like you sort of need them. And you, that's all backwards, all right? People who are narcissistic don't go after depleted, weak people. They make them that way. They go after people who are strong, who have something to offer, who are like an amazing person because they wanna look good. They wanna have a partner who's really awesome. Okay. So they don't go after weak people and they also need somebody who continually serves, continually gives because this person doesn't give not in a way that fills you up. They give the way they want to. It doesn't mean that the person who is the victim, I hate that, but like the person who is the non-narcissistic person, usually an empath, usually an empath because you guys are just continual givers. And so they choose that. And so now I feel like this person or you, if this is, if this is you, then I feel like you are being aware that you have to fill yourself up. So you might, you might kind of in this new relationship, when you get there, it's going to take some healing time, but when you get there, I feel like you might have a sense of, okay, I know how to fill myself up now. I don't know how to give without overgiving. There's a real recalibration that has to happen here. I feel like this person is exactly the right person to help you with that. Okay. If you are the one who's leaving a, um, a very toxic relationship, this person is very nurturing. Uh, if you have had toxic relationships in the past and you don't trust new relationships, this person is very nurturing either way, new or old. But we are talking about a big, a bit of a projected timeline. Okay. Hermit is Virgo season and that is happening late in the summer, uh, early in the fall, late in the summer, two of pentacles, star Aquarius season, healing, 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 healing. Okay. So this can be, I feel like if you are waiting for this person to make some kind of fast move, I'm going to tell you that's not going to happen. Even though they want to, I feel like they have to go through all of this. If this is you, you got to give yourself a break. 
Okay. You've got to give yourself a break. I do feel like you have a person in your life or soon to be in your life who is going to be an incredible bridge to your new life. This is a life partner, emperor, empress. This is a person who knows how to love. Okay. And if you are the one who's waiting for that person to cross the bridge, then you have been chosen to help this person cross that bridge. And you are an incredible, incredibly spiritual and capable person of helping that person do just that. Okay. So I'm going to continue on. We'll see where we go. There is something about Aquarius season here about healing that it might take the rest of this year and into next year for the thing to really become something solid. Aces are all potential. All right. So we're going to see where we go with this. If you want to continue on, there's a link in the description box. Uh, if you're a Pathfinder, we're just going to keep going. All right. I hope you enjoyed that video. If it was helpful to you, please consider liking this video and sharing it with anybody who might have a need for similar kind of information. And if you like this video, check out these videos.